I need you to pay very close attention. I need you to become aware that the world is on your side, that our nature always rewards us, and there is a reason why life is not easy. Everybody in this world goes through uncomfortable struggles, and they are there to stay. They are there to give us confidence when we overcome them, to give us a challenge to work towards, and to put us in our place when we lose our position. For every easy way out, life will introduce you to something called consequence. We all go through phases: our lonely phase, the depression phases, we feel unwanted sometimes, or perhaps lost and unsure of who we are phases. There are two types of people, though, both which cannot run from their discomforts, because it's meant to stay. One will attack their discomforts and make it disappear, and the other will run temporarily to numb their discomfort and lose themselves in external alternatives that make their discomforts appear as external comfort, but never deep down. Oh no, 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 no. But、sooner or later, discomfort runs after you. Something called consequence. You are a warrior because at some point in time, whether it's now or later, you will fight discomfort, and you will grow from it, and you will learn from it. If you give and get hurt, give more. If you give more and hurt more, give even more. If you give even more and hurt even more, give more until it hurts no more. Endure life's pain, and you will live an easy life. Endure life's easiness, and you will live a painful life. You hear that pain is temporary. Well, that's my greatest nightmare, because pain should not be temporary. Discomfort should not be temporary. If your discomfort and your pain is temporary, you're cutting life's corners. You're taking shortcuts you shouldn't be taking. I love my pain. Why? Because now I'm undefeatable. Now I'm powerful. Now I embrace my pain because now I can help you with your pain. Pain, I love you. And now we can all be sane because of our pain. Pain. You won't see the difference until you look back. No pain, no, pain, no, gain. no gain. This is what I believe, and. I'm willing to die for it. Period. This is what you love. This is your passion. Step back. Don't judge it. If you judge it, judge not yet, lest ye be judged. Why? Because when you judge it, you invest emotion in it, and that mo- emotion could be anger. And guess what? That hurts you. That doesn't hurt anybody else. Earn the most you possibly can. Be the most you possibly can. And here's why: the essence of life is growth. The essence of life is growth. To do the best you can. And here's what's interesting: humans are the only life form that will do less than they possibly can. I rather lose out on my dream doing the right thing than to cheat trying to make a shortcut to get to my goal. My best advice for you is to choose the all. Earn all you can. Make all the friends you can. Read as many books as you can. Develop as many skills as you can. See as much as possible. Do as much as possible. Make as much fortune as possible. Give as much of it away as possible. The max. There's no life like it. I'm telling you, once I got on track, I've never looked back. How much time do you spend working on you? How much time do you spend every day working on your dream? In the last 90 days, how many books have you read? 
In the last year, what new skill or knowledge have you acquired? What kind of investment have you made in you? So I'm saying that as you begin to look at where you want to go, if you want to make it today, and things are changing so fast you have to literally run to stand still, I'm saying that you've got to make some conscious effort to begin to work to develop you. Here's something else. Most people are not living their dreams because of fear, ladies and gentlemen. Fear, limited vision, and lack of self-esteem is what keep most people doing things they don't want to do. How easy is it to get up in the morning when you know you're not doing all that it takes? It's not very easy at all. You can just lay there awake thinking, oh, what's a few more minutes in bed? It won't matter much anyway. Wrong. It does matter. It will matter. Now, how easy is it to get up in the morning when you're pouring it on, doing the best you can, anxious to get going, make progress toward your dreams? It's a whole different story. When you're resting to renew your reserves, it's much different than resting to avoid your day. When you're psyched up and excited for your life, when you're excited for what you plan to accomplish for the day, it's amazing you'll wake up before the alarm clock even tries to startle you away. Your successes fuel your ambition. Your successes give you extra energy. Your successes pave the way for more successes. It's the snowball effect. With one success, you're excited to meet another, and another, and another. And pretty soon, the disciplines that were so difficult in the beginning, the disciplines that got you going, are now part of your philosophy. Every passing minute is another chance to turn it all around. Never believe a prediction that doesn't empower you. How many predictions have been thrown at you your whole life? If you believe predictions that do not empower you, you will wither away and die. Either physically die or your spirit will die as you just walk around the world like a carcass that is just following the masses. You will be given a lot of titles in your life. You will be told so many different things. You must only listen to that which empowers you. And see, it's not important how long you live. What's important is how you live. The first thing I believe you gotta do to turn yourself around is really Take control of your mind, or specifically, you gotta feed and strengthen the mind. Guess what? You're gonna make some mistakes. So the person who's never made a mistake hasn't done anything. If you're gonna make some mistakes if you wanna do something out here, you're gonna fall flat on your face. You're gonna be criticized when you come out into the arena called life. You're gonna feel awkward and stupid and dumb sometimes. It goes with the territory. But it's okay. Take charge of your own life. Then walk away from the 95%. Don't go where they go. Don't do what they do. Don't talk like they talk. Develop you a whole new language. Don't use their vocabulary. Don't use their excuses. Once you look back on it, you will never turn back. You'll never go back to the old ways and the old language and the old neglect. Never. Spend each day trying to be a little wiser than you were when you woke up. Discharge your duties faithfully and well. Step by step you get ahead, but not necessarily in fast spurts. But you build discipline by preparing for fast spurts. Slug it out one inch at a time, day by day. And at the end of the day, if you live long enough, most people get what they deserve.
Through every generation of the human race, there has been a constant war, a war with fear. Those who have the courage to conquer it are made free, and those who are conquered by it are made to suffer until they have the courage to defeat it, or death takes them. The reason why most people stop at the first hurdle is because they have something to prove. That is why. You want to show the world you are this person, which is a persona, which is a mask. If you don't know exactly what you want or you let yourself get beyond that into something in general, you're not going to achieve it. Clarity is power. You've got to know the specific result you're after. What do you want? You can't answer that question right now in your personal life, in your body, in your relationships, in your finances, in your spirituality, and you're not going to be as fulfilled as you want to be. The time that you make a decision can depend the outcome of your destiny, your dreams, your goals. The decisions you make today will determine your tomorrow. When things don't work out for you, when things happen that you could not anticipate, what are the reasons that you can think of that can keep you strong? that can keep you in the game, that will be your rod and staff to comfort you, that can be your bridge over troubled waters. Those reasons are very important. Nietzsche said, if you know the why for living, you can endure almost anyhow. In the 17th chapter of St. Luke, it is written, the kingdom of God is within man, not one man, nor a group of men, but in all men, in you, you, the people, have the power. The power to create machines, the power to create happiness. You, the people, have the power to make this life free and beautiful, to make this life a wonderful adventure. Time and time again, people will tell you, you can't do it. You can't reach your dreams. You can't reach your goals. So today, telling you now to take one step forward, just believe for one day that you can achieve your dream. You can achieve that goal. You can make the winning basket. You can score the winning touchdown. Your competitors will not beat you today. No matter what stands in front of you, just believe, fight, fight, fight. Don't give up. Don't give in and believe that tomorrow you will be on top. That tomorrow everyone will talk about you and how great you were. That's how you become a legend. Sometimes you may lose, but a real champion gets back up. Fights again and shows everyone falling is all a part of getting up. That in order to be great, sometimes you may have to fall. You don't know what failure looks like. You won't know what success is. Don't even use the word commit. Don't even think about the word discipline. Just do the thing every single day, whether you feel like it or not. I know you're not living up to your full potential. I know that all your energy, all your strength, like right, all your skills, all your capabilities, like you're not operating on a thousand percent. If you're watching me, I know there's still some things you can do, some limits that you can push. You and your life, you need to take it personally. I want you to cry right now. Whatever change in your life that you want to have, that you must have, you need to take it personally. You need to cry. Your finances are low. Cry about it. Cry about it. Take it personally. You're, you're overweight? Take it personally. I want you to cry about it. Whatever is going on in your life, whatever is going on, I want you to take it to a whole new level and you must make this change. But imagine, if you will, being on your deathbed and standing around your bed, the ghost of the dreams, the ideas, the abilities, the talents, given to you by life and that you for whatever reason you never went after that dream you never acted on those ideas you never used those talents you never used those gifts 
And there they are standing around your bed, looking at you with large, angry eyes, saying, we came to you. And only you could have given us life. And now we must die with you forever. If you don't develop the courage to do that which has been given you to do, and you spend a lot of time going around trying to convince other people or trying to get their approval, what will happen is that you will lose your nerve and other people will convince you that what you are doing doesn't have any value and you'll give up on your dream. We go through life trying to seek security and not coming outside of our comfort zone and we take most of our stuff with us to the grave. In life you're either here today and you're gone today. And I'm saying that the fact that you're still here, that you're still breathing, you've got some more work and you owe it to yourself. You owe it to yourself so when you get up in the morning that you can look yourself in the face and say, hey, I'm living my life on my terms. See, if you don't decide to act on your dream, if you don't decide to make a decision to live your life, if you don't decide to step into your fears, if you don't decide to say yes to your life, it will never work for you. Many of us never realize our greatness because we become sidetracked by secondary activity. We spread ourselves too thin, don't know how to say no, and we find ourselves doing all kinds of things and never ever have time to do those things that we need to do to work on ourselves. And then there goes a second, that goes another second, that goes another second, and we can't stop and hold time. And before you know it, you wake up one day and you're behind in your dreams and your bills. Ask your question, how much time do you have left? How much time do you have left? Decide that you're gonna take some time to work on you, that you deserve that from yourself, that your life deserves. It's very important, you owe that to yourself. One idea can change your life. One idea can turn your life around. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, something happens for you. It will enable you to transcend yourself, wherever you are, whatever you're doing, do it with everything that you have. Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. If there's something that you want and you're hungry for it, you've got to do whatever is necessary until. And when you give the best you can and that's not enough, you must do what is required. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself, to go on. You begin to see things that have been staying there looking you in the face saying, I can't believe this has been here all this time. It's supposed to be difficult. If it wasn't difficult, then there'd be no growth. There would be no resistance. There'd be nothing to force you to grow stronger with. And that's why I say the most important reason, the most important thing, the most important gift that you receive by taking action, it's you growing stronger and becoming a stronger version of yourself through the challenges, through the resistance, and because it's hard. And don't give up on yourself. Don't throw the towel in so quickly. Many people give up on the one yard line. I want you to get to a place in your life that every mistake you make, every setback you get, Right, every obstacle that you don't that, that, that you don't overcome, every barrier you can't climb. I don't want you to give up, but I want you to fail forward. Every mistake you make has to be another stepping stone, another building block. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will, and I'm not going to let anything stop me. 
I deserve this. See, the last chapter to your life has not been written yet, and it doesn't matter about what happened yesterday. We don't give up. We don't surrender. We don't quit. We see differently. Our perspective is different. And because our perspective is different, our outcomes are different. Our rewards are different. You can think yourself into a depression. You can think your way into stress. You can think your way into misery, frustration. There's so much more power in the mind than you probably like to give yourself credit for. When you wake up in the morning after seeing this video, I want you to decide to think happy thoughts and hanging around and consume yourself with happy things and people. And you will find yourself feeling like your mood and your energy is better. We are all a work in progress. We are all a work in progress. Trying to climb our way up the spiritual ladder. Do better, be better. Trying our best to not put our, our hands and our legs on obvious landmines and making mistakes. No one's perfect. But I just want to remind you of the power of the mind. You can create the outcome of your hour, your week, your month and your year you just have to decide in your mind what you want it to be some of y'all are struggling with depression and being sad and just being in this blue funk and you can't shake it but I do know and I recognize that it does exist but there's a more power in the mind than you probably like to think and give yourself credit for. If your life and your surroundings is a nightmare while you're awake, those same nightmares are going to continue into your sleep. Because the mind doesn't turn off because you close your eyes to go to sleep and rest. Think yourself into a depression. Keep thinking and replaying and thinking and replaying, playing the same shit over and over and over in your mind. And then your body naturally will feel the effects of what you've created in your mind. And a lot of you guys are on the receiving end of something that happened to you, a heartbreak a situation, disrespect, feeling vulnerable, feeling like someone or a situation has caused you to be on the receiving end. And so you're feeling the effects of losing a grandmother, a grandfather, a friend, a family member, a cousin, your best friend, dealing with the trauma and the psychological effects of losing your child, a car accident, Maybe something that you witnessed. And so it's very natural for something that you've experienced to replay in your mind over and over and over. But if you change your mind, it'll change your life. There's more power in the mind than you'd like to give credit for. Change your mind. Decide that you love yourself enough to not surround yourself with people, things, and situations that can have your mind continuing to spiral down this negative and dysfunctional train. 
be kind to yourself. You are actually doing the best you can. Be kind to yourself. Don't beat yourself. Don't drive yourself crazy. You are actually doing the best you can. I don't remember the last time I lost sleep over a hater because I stopped giving haters permission to affect my life, my day, my month, and my year. If someone has something to say and it actually makes sense, you're going to help me to grow, mature, consider new thoughts and feelings, views and perspectives that don't exist. But for people that go out of their way to try and reflect their negativity and their hate and their animosity and their own life's insecurities and frustrations out on you, I've disowned you. And so you don't have any effects on me. And I want those people out there that can relate to that to join me. There is a mature way to listen to critiques, criticism, feedback, comments, insight, and information. Hurt people will go out of their way to hurt people. Insecure people will go above and beyond to create insecurities. Negative people will see to it that you feel the negative effects of who they are. Haters have a job to do. They hate. But it doesn't mean that I'm going to allow what your intentions are to affect me. I love myself enough to where I've created a force field away from negative people with negative intentions towards my life. There's a lot of power in the mind. Just asking that you stop thinking your way into a depression. Your mind is a battlefield. Your mind is the battlefield. Because there's so much turmoil, trauma, and dysfunction playing out in your mind. And you're physically experiencing the effects of your mind. Pray on it. You can't be stressed, depressed, miserable, frustrated over the things that God has given you clarity over. And it doesn't mean that after you get clarity that whatever you're going through is going to go away. But you're going to feel the burden and the stress and the psychological effects that it's been having on you to get lifted off of you because you have clarity. There's a lot of power in the mind. And if you didn't know that, I just wanted to make you aware of that. You will never find time for anything. If you want time, you must make it. The successful warrior is the average person with laser-like focus. In many ways, society's conditions people to go with the flow or you better accept what is offered and not to make any waves or go against tradition. Well, sometimes in this is falsely interpreted as advice to not follow your dreams. If you need to step outside of what is normal or usual to pursue your dreams, then do that exactly. So society is not your influence. There's going to be moments where you're, you're, you're sick of it. But what separates people who can overcome that frustration and those who just give into it is the level of commitment that you have. For things to change for you, you've got to change. And whether I'm talking to high school kids or business executives, my message is always the same. And it goes like this. The only way it gets better for you is when you get better.
he who would succeed today must not only be brave, but must also dare to take chances. He who waits for certainty never wins. 80% of success in anything is your psychology, and 20% is the mechanic. So those inner conflicts are when you take two steps forward and you pull three steps back. When you're alone with your thoughts, you get an idea of what your thoughts actually are. If you live your life just acting constantly on the momentum of other people's expectations, of you wanting to be liked by these other people, you can run into a trap and you, you, you set up a life that you didn't really want. Your life is certainly some sort of a journey. It's certainly some sort of a journey. And we have to all be aware that when we're making journeys, we're not going to always make the right steps. And sometimes you have to back up and try again and calculate your, your future. And then also look around all the people that didn't do it and look at the misery that they're in and learn that you don't want to be like them. And then look at the people that are, have kind of taken chances and navigated their way. What did they do differently? What, what, what objectivity do they have that maybe you lack? What insight into their own mistakes are they willing to delve into that you're not, that you step back and go, you know, I just don't, I just don't want to look at myself that closely. But the person who's able to look at themselves the closest is going to get the more rational results. I've often said that I wished people could realize all their dreams and wealth and fame and so that they could see that it's not where you're going to find your sense of completion. I can tell you from experience, the effect you have on others is the most valuable currency there is. How will you serve the world? What do they need that your talent can provide? That's all you have to figure out. Why not take a chance on faith as well? Not religion, but faith. Not hope, but faith. I don't believe in hope. Hope is a beggar. Hope walks through the fire and faith leaps over it. You are ready and able to do beautiful things in this world. As a child, my parents always told me, you could be whatever you want to be. You could do whatever you want to do but I didn't totally believe it. Yet I went out in the world and I carried myself and I held my head high and I stood there and I looked people in their eyes and I talked to people as if I was deserving of everything that this planet has to offer. Confucius said one time, he who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. It's time to change. It's time to walk down another street. What is your dream? I just want to ask you one question. What do you want to be remembered for? I hope you want to be remembered as a grinder. Someone who fights their way through all the things that they go through. Do not give up on your marriage. Do not give up in school. Do not give up on your goals and your dreams. You want to be an athlete. Grind. You want to open up that company, that organization. Grind. Nobody has to convince you to do what you have to do. You wake up early. You stay up late. You will do whatever you have to do to get where you need to go. Who gave me five grand when I was at Michigan State doing my program? I didn't get a, I didn't have no budget. But I didn't need a budget. I had a dream. I didn't need no help. The president never came and said to me, ET, we're going to help your program for this institution blow up. The president never came and I never quit. I never gave up. Why? Because it wasn't her dream in the first place to take care of a group of kids from the D. It was my dream. It was my goal. I don't expect you to do, I don't expect you to believe in my dream like I believe in my dream. And the problem with some of y'all is you want somebody else to support your dream. It's yours. I don't owe you a dime. It's your dream. If you want it to happen, get your butt up and make it happen. If you want it to happen, rise and grind. 
The warfare is in your mind. It's not in your checkbook. It's not in your savings account. It's not on your job. The fight that you got to fight is in your mind. There is always someone on your heels. There's always someone with talent. There's always someone hungry to take what you have. So where's that differentiating factor? It's within. It's in your why. If you're number one, you got to act like you're still number two trying to get there. These people are relentless. You are always replaceable in the office, on your roster spot. And every year I tell you, there's always going to be someone with more ability, with more privilege. So where's your competitive edge? It's up to you to muster it up and revisit your past where you weren't the top dog. Revisit that pain. Check yourself for that hunger and deliver it from the inside out. Outthink them, outsmart them, outwork them. I will not be outworked, period. Well, one of the things about life, you're going to get hurt. You're going to make some mistakes. You're going to fail your way to success. But you've got to be willing to experiment. You've got to be willing to push yourself. You've got to be willing to challenge yourself by putting yourself in a perpetual state of discomfort. It's time to put your best foot forward. It's not about just putting in hours. It's about what are you doing with those hours you're putting in. Stay focused in accomplishing every single goal, every single day. We're trying to reach a pinnacle point. Nobody else can give you the effort that you need. Nobody tells you when you're successful. You know when you're successful. You know if you're putting in enough time to become great. You know when you're good. And there will be times when you feel like giving up. You just got to go one more mile. You got to go one more day. And I guarantee you'll find that motivation that you need. There's something that's built on the inside of you that man cannot give you. Your life, your health, your business, the situation that you're going through, everything that you've been through should push you to your destiny. Today is the day. the most powerful motivational speeches that I have ever heard came from people who told me I couldn't do something. You know why? Because when they told me I couldn't do it, I was bound and determined to show them that I could. Tell me I can't do it. I will prove you wrong. I will show you. We are not made to survive. We're not made to manage our pain or get through it. We're made to be creators of our lives. We can create anything, anything we can dream about, we can create. How much of life do you feel like you control? Or how much does life control you? Do you tend to control more of what's going on or events controlling you? It's very easy to have those events start to take control unless we take control of what's between our ears, our own mind. You see, what you and I focus on massively affects how we feel, whether we're thriving or surviving. If you focus on what you can't control, if you focus on the past, if you focus on what's missing from your life constantly, that pattern of focus will make you frustrated, overwhelmed, depressed. Focus equals power. If you want to thrive, you got to focus on what you can control. you got to focus on the difference you can make. you got to focus on what's already in your life that you're grateful for. Most people allow their fear of failure, 80%, allow their fear of failure to outweigh their desire to succeed. When you're willing to fail again and again and again, when you make up your mind to become unstoppable, when you make up your mind to become a no matter what person, then that will then give birth to a part of yourself that you don't know right now. Set some higher goals, reach for some higher purpose, go for something beyond what you thought you could do. You've got to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. But here's the big one, believe in yourself. Believe in yourself. Let me run something past you. I'm not saying this is fact or truth. 
what I am saying is, imagine. We're all here for the simple reason of simply being. We have to be here for the world to work. Black has white, love has hate, chaos has peace, self has other. We as a person needs to exist to simply have others exist around us. So then, if this is the way you live, why stop your boundaries? Why stop at average? Why don't you try and become or create a more fulfilling energy for others to live on? Make a statement in this world. People come up with the excuses of, I'm too tired, or I'm feeling sad, or even, I can't be bothered. All you want is for the pain to stop and to be able to breathe. That's your only goal, your only need. Same with success. When you want something as much as you want to breathe, you will overcome the pain. And you will achieve greatness. inspired realize that person is made up of the same whatever it is as you and the only difference is that person is the one who has fought just that little harder if we were all only made up of atoms then why don't you become the bigger energy the stronger energy the superior one can't you see we live off each other and it's the people that shine brightly who affect us positively stop waiting for others to do it first and break through and go do it yourself Look at the four minute mile. People thought it impossible and now every day people can achieve it. If you can break through for yourself, you will break through for others and others will be in awe of you. Increase your energy and let others thrive off it. When living life, try new things. Jump, fall, fight, create love. Live extreme and push your boundaries. Why? Simply because there will be no other time for you to do this. You can dream of these things, but understand you can also achieve them. The moments that take your breath away are the ones that count. You need the downs to make the ups. You need the ups to create the downs. You need to feel the opposites to truly understand the full reality of the life you are living. I don't care how young or old you are, Age is a number and nothing more, and should be determined by experience, by what you have done and tested, what you have dwelled in, how many times you have pushed your limits and broken down. I don't care if you've been beaten to the floor, if your legs are too tired to lift that weight. Break through that barrier and create new ones for you and for others to show off. Get back up and live life, because every second, every second spent not doing so it's time wasted, time that you will never get back. You can become whatever you want. It's you that has to want it, has to fight for it. When you love something, you don't sleep day or night to get it. If you love something, you will stop it loving for it. It doesn't matter about the money, because when you truly love something, money is no object, it appears. When there's a will, there's a way. When you truly need something, you can find a way, and you stop at nothing to reach it.
the more you put in, the more you get out, and eventually you'll master it. Become free. Live life long. Enjoy the surf of life. Because you will always prevail. to die knowing you touched others' hearts. Be powerful. Be sincere. Vindicate others in negative minds. Live your dream and truly master life. If you do it once, you can do it again, and again, and again. Motivation doesn't get anything done. Motivation gets you going. Discipline, commitment, strong habits is what gets things done. Motivation is very ungrounded. Right? It's, very, it's all up here. Whoa, I feel good. But when it comes time to bring it into practice, you cannot rely on it. Motivation is just a feeling. Grounded action is what gets things done. So here's my invitation to you. The next time you feel motivated, don't do anything grand and exciting or, or, or set any lofty expectations for yourself to like stay that way or whatever the case may be. Get a pad and paper and write down one or two things that you're going to commit to doing every single day, no matter what. You're gonna, you're gonna use that motivation to build a machine for yourself. Sometimes it ain't about being the smartest. Sometimes it's not even about working the hardest. Sometimes it's about consistency. You consistency, just keep doing it, and keep doing it, and keep doing it, and never stop, and never give up, and never quit, and keep doing it, and day after day, play after play, second after second, minute by minute. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Again, and again, and again. What changes our whole life is action. Why don't we take action? Fear. What do we got to do to get ourselves to do it? We got to make sure that we push ourselves through it by making a decision. The point in which change happens is a decision. Every change in your life that you want will come from something simple, a decision. People go, what does it take to change? Decide. But you all, God, that sounds so simple and so basic. Was that easy? I'd already have done it, Mr. Robbins. No, it is that easy and you're still not doing it. Because you are not putting yourself in a state to decide. See, a real decision is not like a preference. It's not like where you say, I'll try it and see. That's not a decision. Decision comes from Latin. It means like incision to cut off from. Decision is when you cut off any possibility except the thing you're committed to. It's like that is it. When you really decide, it's not an effort. Once you've cut it off, it doesn't take effort. Deciding takes effort, but once you've decided, it's over. You don't think about it anymore. It's like it's easier to fast than it is to diet. Because when you're fasting, somebody offers you something, you don't even think about it. You go, no, I'm not eating. Right? When you're dieting, you're like, well, maybe we can have a little more. This is a little piece of cake. It's not that many calories. Right? And pretty soon you're back to where you were again. So a real decision is what you got to make. When you make a real decision, life changes. But it's a real decision. You burn your bridges. You only move forward. Now. The way to get yourself there is to put yourself in state and condition it. Conditioning is this. Build the muscle. Do you do it one time? No. You do it a lot and you do beyond what you're comfortable with and the muscle expands. And now what used to be hard to do, as the muscle grows, it's easy. That's the same thing with every other kind of muscle. But I'll give you one example. They take monkeys and they will take four of their fingers and tape them down. 
And then they take one finger and they bend it back and forth 10,000 times. Every time they bend this finger back and forth like this, in your brain, for you to do this once, twice, you have to make connections between neurons in your brain. Neuron's a big word for nerve cells. So to do this, imagine, as a metaphor, it's not exactly like this, to do this once, you got to put a connection, a thin thread had to be grown between this neuron and this neuron as an example, as a metaphor. Do it again, two thin threads. Do it 10,000 times, and guess what? You are wired to do this. Can you condition yourself to feel depressed to where it literally it feels more comfortable because you go there more often and you're wired to be there? Yes or no? Can you condition yourself to be quick to anger? Yes or no? Can you condition yourself to feeling overwhelmed at the drop of a hat? Can you condition yourself to feel loved all the time? Even if people say, I hate you. Okay, could you still feel loved? Can you condition yourself to feel happy as a consistent way of living? All the time, yes or no? But you know what? Most people don't believe that, but of course it is. It's the same nervous system. You'll develop something called emotional muscle. And emotional muscle is where your whole life comes in. Repetition is the mother of skill until it gets conditioned, until it's automatic. When you have built a habit, it's ingrained in your nervous system in such a way that the brain doesn't even have to consider whether or not it'll get done. It just gets done because you committed. So stop getting motivated. You don't need motivation. No, you need motivation. Motivation doesn't afford you anything except good feelings in your body. The good feelings in your body is an indication that there's something that you want. Now you get to work by doing it every single day. And again, and again, and again.